Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofinet the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentedge in a bit of a different format where I'm gonna try and do everything as live as possible without a, a script as the usual episodes. Today, we're gonna take a look at a very special deck, uh, something I call the Shiro Blamo deck, uh, a Squiatel deck, which is focused on more control. And of course, in the name, you can already guess who's that who the focus of this deck is going to be. And that is Shiro. Shiro who can destroy himself and all the other units on the field with the exact same power as himself. So the rest of this deck is focused on getting a Shiro that is as efficient as he can possibly be. So that's why we go with Precision Strike. Um, I do need to note that this deck is based off an ID from uh, Specimen Gwent, so check him out if you want to have the base ID. I did make a few adjustments to the deck just to have it uh, fit to yeah, something a bit, a bit more um, nature focused. So basically the biggest changes that I made to the deck is removing Novigradian Justice with um, Shaping Nature, so adding another nature card uh, which will gel well with the uh, Symbiosis units. And then swapped out a few of the lower level cards, most likely the uh, the dwarves. I removed a few of them and swapped them out for a Hammer Dryad and a Dryad Matron. And added Harold Gore instead of Dunka as well, because I feel like he's going to have more value than Dunka will ever get. That's basically the base idea of the deck. So we're going with a lot of control, so Precision Strike is going to be very crucial for that. I'm going to show you a few example matches in a minute, so you can see how you should be piloting this deck. Uh, but Pre Precision Strike gives you three charges where you can damage a single enemy unit, or a single unit actually, so you can use it to your advantage as well, by one. Uh, and at the end you spawn a Broccolon, a Broccolon Sentinel, which will also be able to do two damage. So basically you have five damage ticks and a Broccolon Sentinel with your leader ability, which you can use to kind of equalize the field, getting um, as many units as possible to the same power as your Shiro will be, and then just activating Shiro and taking out that entire board. Now, to complement this, of course, we talked about that before, we have a lot of Symbiosis units, so for example, we have the Dwen Canal Guardian, which is a bit of a mix of both, you have Symbiosis and you can do two damage, uh, the Hammer Dryad is, has Symbiosis, which will gel very well with the vitality you get from either the Dryad's Caress or the Shaping Nature card. So that's another very good combo. So boost by five, and then the Vi Vitality will give you five turns of free Hammer Dryad charges. Then you also have, of course, the um, the extra Young Dryad you'll get from Frexenet. And of course, Etne herself, which at her final form gives you three Symbiosis units. To complement the Symbiosis, of course, we have a lot of nature cards, which uh, goes from Tempering, Dryad's Caress, Circle of Life, which is a really good card, by the way. Um, I did reduce it to one because it's not always that useful, because Nature's Rebuke is a bit more useful since you get seven if you manage to get the Death Blow ability as well, on top of the extra three ends you'll spawn with Symbiosis. Um, and then we have two Tutors, so Isn't Grim's Council, since Shiro is the only elf in the deck, you can pull him automatically with Ismgrim's Council and boost him by two, so you can take out all five power unit, uh, units on the field. And you can do the same with Call of the Forest, uh, bringing Shiro to four automatically, since you can pull him from, every, from wherever you want, and get him to four like that. You can also keep him to three, which is his base power, uh, which is very good because my final, my last match I did before recording this was against um, an Elven Swarm deck and I just took out the entire board with a 3 power Shiro, giving everything uh, 3 power and then all the Elven Dead Eyes were also 3 power and I took out the entire board in one go. But sadly I didn't get to record that. Um, aside from that you also have Fov, which can who can pull a nature card from your deck anyone you want. So you basically could use Call of the Forest to pull Fov and then use her to pull a nature card, giving you two nature cards in the same turn. And then you also have the Force Protector, which can get a bronze nature card back from your graveyard. Possibly, ideally, a double um, uh, nature's rebuke, so another five power damage hit. Um, I did also put a Dryad Matron in, because you do get a lot of value out of her if she can get going, at least the five points you get, basically. Um, which is usually better than the Circle of Life, because Circle of Life is its sometimes hard to get it going correctly. Uh, and then of course Harold to end it off with, 
with uh, possibly up to, I think it's 11. So we have nine um, base nature card, but uh, shaping nature is an echo card. So you could pull her again, gives you 10. And then the force protector gives you another one, which brings you up to 11. Um, and then of course, Great Oak is also a very good finisher, especially if you boosted them up during the match. So that's basically all the cards. Uh, did I miss anything? Yeah, maybe Trian Boar gives you automatically seven points if there's a Dryad on the field. We have a lot of Dryads, so that is going to be really nice. And a few lower level Dwarves that you could potentially also pull with uh, Isengrim's Council in case you've no need for him otherwise. So uh, that's the deck. I suggest we uh, dive straight into a match. Because, uh, yeah, it's this is going to be kind of exciting for me because... Um, I'm gonna try to do these matches live, but I'm also, as you can see, I'm also at a full mosaic for rank two. So if I win this next match, I'm actually gonna be able to go to rank one for the first time in my career. Uh, and that gives me, well, I'm only one rank away anymore from pro rank. So I'm really, really excited about this. So uh, here we go. Now, obviously, since this, uh, this is, of course, the uh, final match before I go to rank one, hopefully, I'm probably going to lose because that's the way it went goes. But uh, here we go against Nilfgaard, Imperial Formation. That is usually very, very strong, this meta. So I'm going to have to be careful, I think. Um, I have Isengrim's Council, so I probably should get rid of Shiro because I can pull him. Um, and we can use Fov to use uh, Call of the Forest to even pull him at four as well. Uh, double Dryad's Caress is not really necessary right now, so pretty good starting point, a few low level cards there. But we should be good to get a nice head start here. So opponent goes first, they have the Lamp, so that's an extra 5 power unit. Magnet Division is going to be fine, so that's going to go up to ooh, 5. Well, fair enough. Should probably want to take that out. I could use uh, Frexen F first. I really like to use Frexen F first because then you get that extra boost on the Dryad. Don't, um, by the way, don't boost Etne in this state because she'll lose the boosts when you uh, go further. So we're going to go for the Dwengan L Guardian there and end the turn. So yeah, Magna Division is always annoying because, of course, they'll keep boosting as long as they're alone on the field. If you're using Spies, you can easily mitigate that by putting a Spy right next to it. But right now, we seem to be in a bit of trouble. And there we go, immediately with Bratons, which is interesting. I'm probably going to get uh, the, yeah, the Mage Infiltrator, destroying the uh, Young Dryad in one go. Which means that we don't get the, um, the Dryad on the field, so probably should go with the Dwen Canal Guardian then next. Taking out a bit of damage on the, uh, the Magna Division. I'm trying to get going like that. So I'm trying to keep the Magna Division as low as possible. So next turn we'll do two damage with the tree and boar. And then we can use Nature's Rebuke to kill it off. We're gonna get bleeding on bleeding. Okay, on Frexinet. That's not as efficient as it could be, but there we go. Tree and boar on the field, which gives us an automatic seven points for seven. And that brings the Magna Division up to four. And next turn it's gonna be five. So I can take it out with Nature's Rebuke and be pretty efficient about this. So right now with this setup, I would get at least six points out of Nature's Rebuke because we would get an extra tree ant from the symbiosis on the Dwen Canal Guardian. Um, and if the tree ant boar actually survives, then we'll also be able to boost that thing up to seven. So that gives us eight points in total for just a five provision uh, special card, which is really nice. Because um, you get a real, a real synergy with the uh, nature cards in this deck. And if he doesn't do anything too wild right now, I might even be able to just bleed him out. So that's going to be Tourney Joust. What's he going to use that on? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so he's going to protect the Magna Division. I don't really care at that point then, so I'm just going to put the Tree Ant back. I'm going to then use Nature's Rebuke on Bratons, because Bratons is still uh, simulated, so he can still be boosted as well. So let's take that value out and we get 8 points for our trouble, which brings us only 2 points behind while uh, our opponent had, well, 3 points with the bleeding, uh, while our opponent had the advantage at the start. So that's good. So then we get Bribery. And Bribery is always a surprise. I'm guessing we're going to get either... Aha, uh, uh -huh, okay. The Ocritics, but he probably doesn't have Devotion, or does he? 
we'll see in a minute. So if he gets a copy, he's going to have devotion. And he has devotion. Okay, that's good. Okay, fair enough, I guess. We can take out one of the critters like this. Um, and then just maybe just bleed. So let's use the Dwarven Skirmisher on the uh, Lamp Beast. Uh, the Djinn. The Djinn, I should say. And then we can turn that off. And we're still only four points behind. Uh, which is technically five points behind because, of course, the Magna Division will keep boosting itself. Um, but for now, this is pretty good. We haven't overspent just yet, which is also very important in this deck to not do. Uh, and we have the tools available to actually take out... Because I'm guessing with this setup, he might have uh, Damien to reset the leading ability. Because he's been going through the charges pretty intensely there. And then we get a Seize. And the Seize is not gonna... What is that gonna work on? Okay, hold the Dwarf. Fair enough. That's 11 points ahead. Um, I'm gonna continue bleeding, I think. Um, so, which means I'm gonna put the Mahaka Marauder over there. That gives us a bit of vitality. And we can put the tree and boar back down. There we go. Um, so now we kind of equalized our loss and gain there. But for now, this is fine. We could have purified the tree and boar as well. Might have been a bit of a better idea. But the tree and boar actually um, heals itself every time. It goes back to the ranged row. So I don't see a problem with that just yet. And now we have Ramon Tirconel probably on a... Seems a bit soon to be using that one. Aha, Impera Enforcers. So that's good. That gives me an idea of what their plan is going to be. Uh, so usually it's going to be that they're going to be spending a lot of uh, spires over there. So these guys, the Impera Enforcers, will be able to set up rather nicely. Um, and then take out everything that I try to play, but we'll be able to take that out with Shiro, which is really good, I guess. I could actually do that now, but that seems a bit too soon. So we have indeed three four power units on the other side, but I don't think it's going to be worth it, because I could do that right now if I want to. If we do try Caress on the tree and board, we get an extra tree end on top of that. We get double vitality and then two damage on... The Oak Crit is over there, so I'm going to continue bleeding him a little bit, because I still have the ability to go uh, over his point total. Over their point total, I should say. So this is going to be fine. Let's see where this ends up. So if they're going to play another spying unit, then I'm fine with that, but I feel like they're overplaying a little bit. Because we've seen Ramon, we've seen Bratens, and Bribery. And Bribery, we've got Bribery as well, so definitely going to have to be careful here. My opponent, that is. is they spending, they've been spending a lot of high-powered cards while not getting the value out of it, it seems like. Because uh, because the tree and boar actually stayed alive, because we're getting a lot of value out of that tree and boar, because it hasn't been, uh, been answered. And there we go. That is gonna be... Okay, so now he does boost the spies. Um, oh, I could, I could show you what this does now. Because I could use two charges and get it going. I think I'm going to do it. So that's five units if I can pull that off. So I need to be careful here. So I, I, I'm going to hit that uh, one of the enforcers over there with two charges. And then we're going to use Fav to pull uh, Call of the Forest. And with Call of the Forest, we'll be able to pull Shiru. There we go. And Shiro is now up to four, which means that we can use him to take out everything on the board and pull back the board. So there we go. If they want to go over that, they're going to have to spend the card. So we're definitely going to get card advantage in this match, which is good. And I think we're even guaranteed to pull Gord now. We've spent all our, yeah, all the dwarves are gone except for Gord. So even if we don't pull Gord now, we can actually pull him with Isengrim's Council, which is going to boost him again. Um, so that's... Two points for us, and then, yeah, that's not going to make a difference, so I think I'm just going to pass now. Because we're going to get a very nice card advantage here, this is not going to end well for them. Nope, okay, definitely going to pass now, so we're at the advantage. We still get a bit of vitality on the board as well, so shouldn't be doing anything here. Five points ahead, and we have a card more than them. 
and still have an extra charge on the ability so we still have five points there as well and we get okay Yennefer's invocation but we can easily take out the three end board if we face it again so that is fine and Yennefer's invocation is also gone now so that's also good so we could technically um, do the hammer try it although that might be dangerous so yeah that combo that just entered our hand i'm gonna get rid of the hammer dryad for now and this seems to be fine yeah i'm gonna use the oak critters as my uh my pass card i'm gonna assume they're gonna pass because otherwise i'm just gonna use the tree and protector yeah uh, the forest protector to take out the uh the tree and boar so let's just use oak, oak critters with no target oh there we go there we go they forfeited they knew they were gonna they didn't really have any chance anymore. Okay, that's good. So we we actually, I guess I forgot about this, but GG. And then, um, Blamo. So that's the Shiro Blamo. So you can take out a lot of units in one go. This also very works very well against Ethereals, by the way, in monster decks. But there we go, rank one. I'm really, really glad about that because that was, it's been a long time coming. I usually experiment so much during the season with different types of decks that I don't really rank up that much. I think I usually ranked up like twice or three times every season, which really made me stick around rank four or five every season but this is this is really really exciting so we're gonna do another one um if we lose we lose but then at least you get to see the other side of this that it's not all uh good things all sunshine and rainbows but uh, here we go another one with the shiro blamo kit deck kit deck kit there we go and then we get another Nilgard deck and this time it seems to be fully assimilate because that is double cross if i'm not mistaken and we go first this time. So first means that we need to be pretty careful about what we do. Um, but we actually do have a pretty good hand. I'm gonna get rid of the circle of life for now. A purifier is always handy against Nilfgaard, so might as well keep that in hand. Um, and other than that, this is a really good first hand. So yeah, yeah. There's nothing I need to change about this, even though I still have two redraws. This seems, this seems a-okay, so there we go. Um, I go first. Uh, let's go with... Do we use Frexena again as a start? Might as well use Frexena again as a start, so there we go. Frexena first, and we're gonna just boost the uh, Dwen Canal Guardian again. We didn't even get to use that need uh, in the last round, which is sad, because that is really good. She gives you three symbiosis units in one go, and then we get portal, which is just going to be... That's going to be an assimilate trigger, right? Yeah, and that's the assimilate on the board. Um, again, a good point to start using Shiru, but I think we'll do that later on once we get more control over the board. We still have our ability, so getting rid of those low-level assimilate units is going to be easy peasy. Uh, so let's get the Hammer Dryad out now. And see what else we're gonna get because playing the hammer dryad is always a bit of a risk I know why uh, I realized why specimen didn't want to include it in the deck But I still really like it and it has a freaking squirrel on the I mean look at that It has it has a very nice squirrel on the on the card. So I'm, I'm always biased against squirrels I'm really actually sad that squirrel is a neutral card and not like a, a um, you know um, God damn it, I forgot what I wanted to say. Not, not like a Squirtel unit, because I can't really include it in this deck. While it would be really, really useful. So let's just clear that spying tag off of that. And then we can actually boost the Young Dryad as well to keep giving us that um, those two Symbiosis units. Because they spawn that extra tree end every time. Um, while, they, while our opponent is actually setting up a Simulate. So Mr. Junior, I'm going to suppose that's a him. Then we get Ortorius is going to be lucky with the bronze pull. Might be. No, they're not. Okay. So that's a purify on the hammer dryad, I suppose. Now, hammer dryads are also very risky because they go up really, really quickly. Um, so one of our ways to do this now is I could use Shaping Nature to reinstate that uh, vitality. But it's a risk. It's definitely a risk, um, and I do want to be careful here that I don't overplay. Um, I think Nature's Rebuke is probably best at this point, because um, I can take out, although I could take out um, Artorias in a minute as well. So maybe let's try and take the risk on Shaping Nature, 
and get the vitality going on the hammer drive again. So it's good, but it gives you a very, very high power target. So if we get hit by a Vincent van Morlehem, for example, we're going to be, well, just dead in the water here. Um, so yeah, definitely a very high risk, but uh, it's something you need to take into account that it could happen. Or even an invocation now that I think about it, because um, invocation might also flip this around. So I might just let this run the way it is going, because otherwise I'm going to get hit by something big and I don't want to have this happen. So Bratens gives you another assimilate unit with the extra assimilate tick as well, because the spy that you actually trigger is... Uh, yeah, automatically does that. So that means that I could, so we're going... Um, we're going equal if I stay the course. That's six assimilate units though, so I probably should just end it here. Um, because that's gonna get us to equal, get us to a draw. Although I could take out, but if he, he plays one more assimilate, then I'm down. He's gonna get an extra five points, so even without me doing anything useful. Yeah, I think I should probably pass. Yeah, let's just do that. So that gives me two points, gives us to 35-35. And if they, if he doesn't pass... Yeah, okay, so he doesn't pass. But that, I mean, that tactic on its own would have given them uh, five extra points. So even if they just pull like a four power unit, um, or even just tempering, that's going to be five and an extra six. So that's 11 points in one go. Um, which is really, really powerful. But that also means that he drained like... Yeah, he drained Portal, Bratens and Artorius. And with that also four of his assimilate units. No, three. Three. Is the um, yeah okay, the Imperial Diviner was uh, a copy of course. Um, this seems to be very good. Yeah, I don't need to change anything here. Although I don't want to have the risk of because he might want to push. Although I do, I have everything in hand that I want uh, that I would need to. Counter push, so no, that's fine. Don't need to re redraw. I have the tutors that I want, so not really a problem at all. So they're actually playing assimilate, but with no critics, we can counter that. I don't know if they're just tossing cards or not, so we're gonna have to see about that with this. So that gives us uh, two to four. They're not gonna pass. Okay, interesting. I think I'm going to use the Dwan Canal Guardian to take away the armor on... Uh, what's her name again? Glynis. And that should be good. So 6 to 9 for now. Still doing fine. So there's Loyal. Fine. Is he going to pull a Leto? No. The Hand Gate Sword. Fine again. So that's probably going to go on to Roderick. Yeah, that gives him another Roderick. But that's only one assimilate tick. That is fine. And then we get bribery. Ah, oh, that's another one though. That is another one though. And then the dryad matron. Okay, and that brings the... Hmm. That was a nice play, but of course I have plenty of ways to take that out. Um, I could go with nature's abuke. I don't want to get rid of the tutors just yet, of course. So, what else do we have in the deck? We have Shiro, we have the... Ah, oh, the boar, maybe. Could actually pull the boar. And just hope for five then afterwards. So let's just pull the boar. Uh, the tree on boar with this. Um, and then just let him hit the... Um, yeah, the Glynis. The Glynis, there we go. So we're still ahead. And we just need to stay just a little ahead to uh, be enough here. Because I can always pull the... Um, pull Shiru if I want to with um, Isengrim's Council. So we should be good on that front. And then we get Cantarella. Okay, this might be problematic. Because if they pull one of our better cards... No, they don't. Okay. So that's just the Dwen Canal Guardian. Should probably put that right next to the Matron. 
This is taking a long time, the animations for some reason take uh, quite some time. I think I should probably go with Nature's Rebuke now. Um, just so we can pull it again with the uh, protective. So there we go, extra points for us. And putting back that tree on board to the back. So still five points ahead. Still doing fine. So Shiru is not going to be that useful now, I think. Because of course, how many triads do I still have in the deck? What's my pick rate? I think two. Do I enjoy torture? Okay, so they're going to try. I'm guessing they still have coup de grace. Which would be nice for them. I can't pull Shiro to four. So that's not going to come in handy. But if I just keep putting the damage on Glynis, should be able to pull him with five. Because we're getting closer and closer to something like that. Um, I'll probably just now play Shaping Nature um, again. Yeah, so we can benefit from that. I could go with the Vitality instead of the straight up 8. Straight up 8 or Vitality. So Vitality, I need about 4 turns to get that going. So no, let's just go for the normal Shaping Nature boost on the uh, the lowest tree end over here. So that's just going to be 8. And on top of that, even more tree ends. So even though it's only one Symbiosis unit, we do ev ev get that extra 1 point every single time. Um, I don't think they'll have much use for the other cards in our hands. But they do get an Imperial Diviner, that's also no Assimilate. And we get our Veil Purified, so... And they're actually getting behind quite a bit. I think I should probably... I don't know if they have a Nature card in their graveyard. Ah, uh, they do have Tempering in their graveyard, so that would be nice. Um, I could play Etne now, just to push... Yeah, just to push this along. I'm not going to get the extra symbiosis, though. I'm trying to mitigate what the, the worst would be. Um, and I think the worst would be... Yeah, I'm just going to use Etne now, so just to push. Because um, I want to get rid of any superfluous cards. Well, even Etne is really good, but all the other cards in my hand are also really good. So Gord especially is very, very good. Um, so I want to keep that to the last. And if we can hold off on Isengrim's Council, because right now Isengrim would be worse for me. So I think the only card that I really can play now is going to be the Tree Ant, the Forest Protector. Um, so that's going to give us another... Although... That Circle of Life... We get the extra two damage. Oh no, that's another one. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. That's fine. I think we can just play the tree and protector. Um, yeah, the force protector. So I'm just gonna push. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna push the tree and bore over there. Like this. Then use the force protector and play another nature's rebuke on top of uh, the mage over here. So there we go, the spying mage. And that gets us quite a bit. I don't know why we didn't... So she needs... Oh, didn't I have enough space for the two young dryads? That might be... Oh no, they he took him out. He took him out. He took him out with Circle of Life. I kind of missed that. Um, but now, he's gonna... Ah, he's gonna try and get from my hand, but that's not gonna help him. I think that's... That's the double cross that's coming in. It's going to be useless, because yeah, it's either Isengrim's Council, well, and they won't have any cards, or Gord, which is going to be dead in his hands. Oh no, Telekinesis. Okay, but I don't think they have... Oh, they have a tree end, actually, so Nature's Rebuke would work fine. That's not going to be... Is it enough? Oh wow, that is enough. Oh, that is annoying, that was just enough. And I don't have any vitality anymore, so... Okay, let's just pull back the tree and boar. Um, and then just play Isengrim's Council. It's nothing nothing else I can do about that. So and then just pull maybe Yeah, the lowest one out of the bunch. Um Hmm. I'm not gonna get much use out of the Dryad Matron anyway, so let's just pull that and put that over here. And then that third. So there we go. 
Now, we have card advantage, we have gourds. Um, we're gonna have to be careful that the tree and boar, uh, the tree and the, the tree and the great oak isn't. Well, if it's in our hand, all the better, but other than that, hmm. That is interesting. So we're, we are going to go first, but I don't think Shiro is going to be worth it, right? So I think Shiro, we're not going to get the value out of that, and then the Dryad's Caress isn't going to help. Okay, that's that's okay. That should be okay. Um, what else do we have in the deck, by the way? We have Tempering. Yeah, okay. It's not the best. It's going to have to do, so I think... Yeah, play Fall and then into Tempering. Um, unless, technically Dryad's Caress is going to be more, but if they use Double Cross, they're going to be... No, no, Dryad's Caress is going to be more, so let's just do that. So we get the extra vitality, so even if they pull uh, the Nature's Rebuke out of our hand, that's not going to change anything. Okay, we're fine. Fine for now. Then we get the Dalsbog Runestone, so that's probably his worst card at the moment. Because I started out pretty high. Uh, I don't have oak, so I'm not going to have a very big finisher here. But that is a Slave Hunter with Assimilate, and then of course, yeah, Nature's Rebuke is going to be able to take out Fall with the extra vitality. While otherwise, no, that would have ended out the same, so it didn't make any difference there. So if they're not going for Nature's Rebuke, they're going to go for the Dwarf? No, they're going to go for Nature's Rebuke, okay. Fair enough, but that is... Yeah, that is... Hmm. I should probably now you just use the Dwarven Skirmisher, because that's going to give us 5 points. Um, so that's good. And they already used their leader ability, so that's going to be... I think we're going to be fine. Just going to try and take out everything that we uh, come across, and I think we should have the match here. Yeah, because that's just going to copy the Dwarven Skirmisher. Um... And I think I should probably keep Gord for last. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to use Nature's Rebuke now just on the Slave Hunter. It's kind of a waste, but it is what it is. Keeps us one to one, and with Gord I'm definitely going to win, since I have all my charges and my leader ability as well. I would be surprised if, yeah, there we go. So we just play Gord. Don't even need to use my leader charges here, so I'm just going to pass. There we go. And that's how good this deck is, because... We just won two matches against Nilfgaard, which is one of the strongest factions at the moment, uh, at rank 1 as well, so it's not like we're dealing with players who don't know what they're doing. Um, but we're just, it's, it's a very, very strong deck, so I'm just going to show you the deck composition once again. It's also going to be in the description below, and it's also going to be, uh, there's also, there's also going to be a link to the deck on the Playground website. So here we go, once more the Shiro Blamo deck is uh, using Precision Strike as the leader ability. Then we have, okay, don't move that around, but uh, yeah, mobile, pretty, pretty annoying. Uh, we have Great Oak, very strong finisher, Etne, very strong to start round 3 with. We never really got to use her properly here, but she's very, very strong. Forest Protector, also good to have another Nature's Rebuke, so another 5 damage with an extra 2 boost if you can pull off his Dead Blow ability. Then Call of the Forest together with Isengrim's Council, very good tutor cards to get uh, Shiro out of the deck, either at 4 power or 5 power, taking out all those juicy targets, uh, especially against Skellige. 5 power is really really good to take out a lot of the stronger Skellige cards. So uh, definitely use that like that as well, so keep those tutors in your hand as long as possible, so you can benefit from Shiro the most. Then we have Shaping Nature, a double use for the Nature card. Um, uh, well, it's an Echo card, so you can use it twice, which gives us extra charges on Gord as well. As you saw uh, before, we uh, got 12 points on Gord uh, in that last match. And Shiro himself, definitely uh, very useful. Try to guess uh, what types of units your opponent is going to play. So if you see um, Dead Eye Ambush, you're going to have to keep him a tree to take out all the Elven Dead Eyes. Um, or you can go for, I think, um, against Nilfgaard, you should usually go for four, um, as we used them in the, uh, the, the first match. Um, and then for Skellige, you usually go for five, because a lot of the Skellige cards will get that first initial boost of five. 
Um, and you can take down uh, some of the veteran cards and might go up to seven with your leader ability before taking out like four or five uh, five power units with Shiro. Just be careful that your own units don't get to that power specifically. Then Frexana, as you saw, a very good starting card, gives you two points in your hand and an extra young Dryad for Symbiosis. Then we have four very, very good cute card for nature cards. Uh, you can even pull her with Call of the Forest, then into Fov, and then into a Nodding Nature card, if you're just looking to uh, spam a lot of nature cards in one go, uh, or maybe just to clear out your deck a little bit. Then the Tree and Boar, as you saw, if it goes unanswered, it's really, really strong uh, against basically everything, just to get that constant damage output on the field. Harold Gord, again, doesn't need too much explanation, he goes up to insane numbers for his seven provision cards. Double Nature's Rebuke, very good to remove some of those nasty cards, especially in the early, early runs if you're not uh, building up to a Shiro. Circle of Life, again, gives you a little bit of boosting in hand while also being a nature card. Dryad Matron is just a general good engine to keep your units up to par as well. Hammer Dryad, in combination with Vitality, is very, very strong, but of course gives the, your opponent a very big target. So be careful against Skellige, because they're going to use... Um, Morkvark on top of him, uh, on top of her, because uh, of her insane power at a certain point. Um, you can also use that to your advantage, by the way. I have, uh, I often use the hammer dried to just uh, bait uh, a Morkvark early, so you don't have to deal with him in the last round. Uh, especially if the your opponent isn't using second wind, you can kind of count on that. Then the Dwen Canal Guardians are really, really strong. Two damage is good for removal or setting them up setting your opponent's unit up for Shiru, and she also has uh, Symbiosis. Dryad's Caress is just Purify and Vitality in one, so that's very good against, uh, especially against Nilfgaard to get rid of Poison or stuff like that. Tempering is just in the deck because it's an extra nature card with five points for four. Uh, also very strong. Mahaka Marauder, basically the same reason. It's just a good, uh, a good tinner just to start off with. Ocritus is very, very good as a four provision card. It gives you, especially in this deck because we have Devotion, it's seven points for four with the three points of bleeding, um, which is very, 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 very strong. And it gives you also two Ocritus, which can get the boost from the Nature's Rebuke very, very quickly. And then the Dwarven Skirmisher can have its uses, but it's just there to fill in some of the gaps. Uh, and that's it for today. So that is the Shiro Blamo deck. Uh, check out the deck on the Play Gwent website. If you like the video, let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe give a like. That's always appreciated. If you have some feedback on this, uh, it's also very much appreciated. Uh, also check out Specimen Gwent's video on his original deck. As I said before, this is based off that deck with just a, a few slight alterations. So definitely uh, props to him for the idea. Um, I just made some slight alterations uh, of my own and you can do the same with this deck. So uh, that way we're just building on top of each other's ideas and we're just getting stronger for it. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentech and see you in the next one. Goodbye.